please, uh, if I haven't already, if I could have your attention for a very special introduction for a very special person. Anyone who's had the opportunity to meet our next speaker immediately remembers him. At six feet, nine inches tall, he has a presence, he has a booming voice, a booming voice that could be on TV or radio. At that first meeting, there'll be a handshake that quickly is followed with a hug, followed by a pat on the back. Only then, you can pull away, and when you do, you'll see a big smile, ear to ear. That's just who Big John Rhodes is. He's one of these guys who wants to know more about you than you know about him. Once you get to know him, it's not the larger-than-life appearance that you remember. It's his incredible, upbeat spirit, the spirit that never has a bad day, no matter what. In his fourth season as an assistant at Duquesne University, John was at this event one year ago in support of Duke's guard, Derek Coulter, who was recovering from a battle with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. But little did he know, a few months later, he would be facing his own battle. Concerned about a lump on his neck, he discovered back in February, John went for help. The original thought that it was a case of the mumps that had somehow crossed Fifth Avenue, made its way from the Penguins locker room to Duquesne campus, well, that was dispelled when John was diagnosed with cancer in his throat and the base of his tongue. But in typical John Rhodes fashion, he had a game plan. He made it. It was time for him to fight back. But less than a week before he was to begin those cancer treatments, John, who was in Philadelphia at the time, was struck by a car in downtown Philly during a team road trip. So on the day he was supposed to begin treatment for cancer, Big John found himself on his back in Philadelphia, undergoing six hours of surgery to have two plates and a rod inserted into his broken leg. He was also fitted with a brace and a neck brace as well. John returned to Pittsburgh four days later and wheelchair bound and wearing a neck brace, he showed up for his first chemotherapy treatment at the Hillman Cancer Center. He underwent a total of seven of those treatments as well as 35 radiation treatments. He began his gradual return to good health. Shortly thereafter, John also began to return to his coaching staff, the staff he cares so much about, and of course his kids who he cares so much about. So he's walking a little bit with a limp these days, but the leg is 100% better, and that booming voice isn't quite back, but you'll hear it. The one thing you will see is that smile, and never leaves him, ear to ear. It's that spirit. It's the spirit that everyone who has to go through this disease needs to beat it. And even in its darkest days, he may have doubts, but he never let anyone know that there was doubt. He fought. He continues to be, in my view, larger than ever because of what he was able to accomplish. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Coach John Rhodes. Wow. Wow, what's up, my man? <laughs> Who's the guy you're talking about? Man, bigger than life? That's something. Um, first and foremost, good evening, everybody. I mean, it's an honor, a privilege, and truly a blessing to be standing before you tonight. Um, great American author Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. Uh, before I share my story, there are a number of people that helped me along this journey that I'd like to acknowledge. And so please bear with me while I mention them by name because when you're fighting something like this, you can't do it alone. Everybody has to circle up, put their arms around you, and just give you total support and buy in because it's a terrible thing. I'd like to thank good people from CBC for the countless hours of work they've been done to host such a special event. We've been coming here now, and it's one thing we talked about in our pre-practice meeting today. It was like, you know, it's great to be honored for some things, but man, hoping they introduce next year. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't wish this on anybody because if somebody had to carry it, I'm willing to if it helps others. Mary Beth, thanks a lot for getting me organized in my mindset because she came to me and said, Coach, 
in the Mary Beth Ford fashion. Choice versus cancer, they want you to come speak. They want you to be a special guest. I said, special guest? <laughs> special guest, I mean, why am I being honored? Why am I being recognized? And it's because of the people like yourselves who have been so willing, so caring, and so giving over a number of years to support coaches versus cancer. I mean, we try to do a lot of different things with suits and sneakers and things of that nature, but it's people like yourselves that make the difference. So I said, sure. Just give me a little bit of help. Give me a little bit of leeway. Let me know what to talk about. She said, you'll be fine. Just do what you do. You'll be fine. Just jump right in there. So I said, all right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So with that being said, the first thing I said to myself was, I wanted to take advantage of an opportunity to thank as many people as I can. And I don't want to be long-winded, but I do want to mention these people, especially my man, Coach Perry, um, <clears throat> and our basketball family. Um, you know, when this thing came on me, the coach put his arms around me, said, first thing he said, man, I love you. I said, you're going to be fine. And I looked at him, I said, damn, Coach, I'm going to be fine. All right, I'm going to be fine. All right? And with that, our whole staff, you know, we, we started telling each other one by one. They're the only ones that knew before my wife. So, you know, Coach Leishman, Coach Nash, Coach Bodnick, Coach Lawson, Coach Steckle, neutral staff. Thanks for all the support, fellas. Because without you guys on, on a daily basis, especially picking up and picking up the reins and shaking that horse and making them work every day, this wouldn't be possible. And, you know, it's all about us and by our team. And those guys, 13, 14, 15 guys in our locker room, they were sending me texts on a daily basis, you know, in the middle of the night, saying, hey, coach, how you doing? That means the world to me. Because, you know, we as coaches, we try to mentor these young men, let them know that we're here for them. Those are cats, they were there for me. And on a daily basis, I was hearing from each and every one of them coming to the house, coming to the hospital, they gave me motivation. They gave me drive. So they're looking at me for strength, but I'm looking at them. And again, it's one of those moments where we're all in it together. And it's been a, 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 a rewarding experience. And I hope as people deal with adversity in their lives that they pick up something from that. Um, words can express how good it feels to, to give back. And this is my opportunity. There's a couple other people that I'd like to mention before I move on. Coach Lombardi, one of my mentors, person who come to me on in visits and give me words of wisdom, but he always gave, also gave me hope. Thank you. My college coach came up today. It means the world to me. And actually, his wife, Mrs. Hine, she not only dealt with one bout of cancer, she dealt with two. And again, she called me and she said, John, you're gonna be fine. Just keep up that faith, keep up that spirit, and I believe you. Mrs. Ferry, she's the one that kept these meals. I lost a lot of weight, you know. Talk about a booming voice and being big. I was a biscuit away from being 300 pounds, right? So I started taking my chemo, my radiation, but boom, instant diet. You know, Slim Fast didn't have anything on me. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't encourage anybody to take that type of diet, <laughs> but if you want to lose weight, I'm just saying, all right? I can give a lot of thanks to the host of doctors, the nurses, and the staff attendants that gave me aid because they're the ones that nurtured me back to health. And, um, you know, with that <clears throat> being said, uh, my family, my friends, and all the people that also came to help, I'd be remiss if I failed to mention my best friend, my soulmate, Jackie, for being there for me when I didn't know up from down. And yeah, good, hell, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love you, honey. All right. A lot of long nights, 
but she was always there every day. And I'm like, honey, what about this? She said, no, we, we got this. We'll be fine. So I'm like, all right, you know, happy wife, happy life. We're fine. <laughs> all right. So as Mr. Pompiani said, back in Jan January, I had a little sore throat. I'm like, all right, you know, coaches, we're like, ah, next game, what are we going to do? We got scouting report, you know, recruiting. And didn't think much of it. Next thing I know, he has this lump. And I'm like, uh, all right. That's not right. OK. So I talked to Victor Bauer, our tra athletic trainer. And I, I said, Vic, take a look at this. He said, ah, it's probably just the mumps, man. Probably just came across Forbes Avenue and snuck up in here and, and got you. I'm like, all right. So he said, we run to, down to the medical center, get a little swab, get some antibiotics, you'll be over with. I said, fine. So <clears throat> come to find out, it wasn't. And you know, that's one of those times when somebody walks in, you're hoping a diagnosis would be one thing, it turned out to be the big C. And when Dr. Anders and, and Victor Bowers sat me down and told me, it's also wah, 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 the white noise, you just, I, I couldn't fathom what was going through my mind and what I had to do to try to attack this thing. And having the experience of losing a lot of friends and family members to this disease, I didn't think the worst, but I thought to myself, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that, that hopefully should beat it. And fortunately, we've been in a situation that, that I am. Um, so first thing I had to do, I had to call my wife. And I don't remember that conversation, but I know it wasn't easy. So the next thing was is, OK, we have two beautiful children. How we tell them? And for those of you who have ever had to experience something like that, that's not easy as well. But you know, bad news doesn't get better over the course of time. It's just bad news. So we just thought we tell them. And kids being resilient, they handle it well. They handle it like troopers. And again, it's one of those experiences that hopefully in their lifetime, we don't have to deal with it too much. But it'll help them be better people for it. Um, but with that, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, say thanks to all you people that, you know, really helped me along the way. With the Shady Side medical team of uh, Dr. Ferris, Dr. Orr, and Dr. Clump, we set up a treatment plan that would begin six days later. And as you heard before, I'm walking in the middle of the street in Philadelphia, minding my own business, and car comes out of nowhere and hits me. Now, I could see if it was dark, OK, all right? And the guy didn't see me in the dark, all right? But I don't know if you saw some of our players in here, but they had on the, the red suit. I mean, come on, fellas. I mean, so when that happened to me, I'm, I'm laying there, and I'm thinking, oh, what happened? And within 15 seconds, a paramedic and a off-duty uh, <coughs> first aid responder were at my side. I'm like, something's not right here. And they're telling me what happened. They said, you just got hit by a car. I'm like, what? <laughs> For real? All right. So next thing I, I know is that, so what did you do? I said, hey, I'm with two of my assistant coaches. And they're in the store doing some shopping. Would you go page them and tell them I'm out here laying in the middle of the street? <laughs> so he did. Next thing I know, you know, my man's coach G comes out. He's ready to fight. You know, he's like, what happened? You know, and my leg is turned the other way. All right. And Coach Lawson, being the person that he is, he's just kind of checking everything in and they're assisting me as well. But we never lost our cool. We never lost our composure. It was just like, all right, it's one of those things. So. Suddenly, the game against LaSalle the next night didn't seem that important because it's like, now we got fixed it. So I get out my phone and I, hey, hon, I just got hit by a car. <laughs> and she said, well, what'd you say? I said, hon, I just got hit by a car and I'm laying in the street and they're probably going to take me to the hospital because it's bad. <laughs> so what do I do? I said, I, I, I don't know, hon, it's just, it's not good. So, <laughs> Seriously, I, so with that being said, next thing I know, she was on her way. And then 
I've been told that they had called Coach Ferry. And Coach Ferry said, what? <laughs> what happened? I said, and so they told him. So we had to deal with that. So with that, I had broken tibia, broken fibula, and a C5 facet fracture in my neck. And so I'm in a brace, and I'm thinking, all right, so I'm supposed to start chemo and radiation tomorrow. And this, this is going to work. So then I got a little bit of concern. Because I'm like, you know, time is of the essence. You know, the sooner we start the treatment, the better off it was going to be. So two weeks later, I was transported back to Shadyside. It wasn't a fun trip, all right? Coming through the tunnels. And, and for all you people who have traveled to Philly before on the turnpike, thinking about doing that, being strapped to a gurney, <laughs> made for somebody about so tall. <laughs> and for six hours, I'm sitting there, and they, you know, they gave me a little bit of medication, but <laughs> that didn't help, all right? Because by the time we got to Shadyside, the medication wore off, all right? <laughs> so fortunately, we, we made it safely. So over the course of seven, the several months, I had a lot of time to reflect and process of what I was going through. And I never ask the question why this happened to me. I focus on how I was going to attack this thing and beat the odds. It's been a long road back to recovery, and I couldn't do it on my own. So I, I'm thankful. Being thankful is an understatement. All the cards, the letters, the texts, the Facebook messages help me keep my spirits and give me the motivation to get after it every day. On July the 9th, I got the diagnosis, my first checkup, for which I hoped and prayed. The tumor is gone and cancer hasn't spread. <laughs> it's one of those things that every time I see the UPMC commercial, or one of the success stories, I get chill bumps. And you, my eyes start welling up as they are now. And I think they're talking about me. But those are some good people. And I'm fortunate to be here. I'm, I'm fortunate to be in a city like Pittsburgh where you get the best medical attention in the world, as far as I'm concerned. And they saved my life. Um, as I said before, this is an important day because I know why I'm here. I have an opportunity to stand up, be a six foot nine walking billboard inspiration why you should feel support and how it can help. And this evening, I challenge you to give as much as you can because there are more success stories out there just waiting to happen. And it's up to us, each and every one of us, to put a stop to this, this bad disease. So thanks for being here this evening. Hope you have a lot of fun. And thanks for letting me share my story.